My name is Jonathan Charles. My call is NB3I, and I'm here with my friend Dale, N3BNA, and uh, we would like to do an uh, antenna comparison just today uh, between a, con a Carolina Wyndham and a vertical antenna, a dipole, and an M-fed uh, halfway antenna. Um, there's a, I have a vested interest in this because I would like to take a trip. Not every one of all of us can go to faraway places and set up radio stations because it's far too expensive. However, I do have a son in Nicaragua, and I'd like to set up a station down at his place. And how do I do that? I, uh, I can't take large antennas. I need to, uh, to uh, have uh, uh, something that can be carried in a suitcase. So I made up uh, three different antennas here. Uh, this is uh, a vertical antenna, which, uh, which is uh, resident on 20, uh, 15, uh, 10, four, and 40. And uh, it's a ground plane vertical with raised radials. And I have it so that I can add and subtract length for the various bands so it's resident on each band. And then uh, I have another antenna here, which is dipole. A dipole, uh, which also is, you can see, you can uh, add and subtract lengths by connecting these wires together. Some people call this a linked dipole. And it, uh, it works really well. Uh, it's resident on each band that I plan to use. And, and, and now to confuse things, uh, uh, I have a friend who we, I did field day with uh, who made up an antenna for me called N-Fed Half Wave Antenna. And uh, he was totally sold on this antenna and, and I was a bit skeptical. I've been always taught that uh, antennas that aren't resident are, uh, are uh, a compromise antenna. And, uh, and yet he was very convinced that this antenna was a great antenna. And, uh, and so he made up this antenna for me with this transformer. It has a, uh, it has a, uh, a, a vertical radiating coax that's about 25 feet long or so, 30 feet long probably, I'm not quite sure. And then we attach a long wire onto this box and stretch it out. So, uh, uh, <laughs> like I said, I'm very skeptical of these antennas that are multi-band antennas. Uh, I saw YouTube one time of a person uh, who uh, was demonstrating how broadbanded his antenna was. And as I watched that YouTube, all I could think of was that my dummy load is, is uh, broadbanded also in the same way. And how effective is that? So, so I am here to test this antenna. I have to admit, my first test surprised me a bit, and it performed relatively well. So, uh, so we'll see. So all three of these antennas, as you can see, uh, could sit in, fit in a suitcase very well. So that's my purpose for this antenna. We'll start by uh, putting up the wire antennas. So uh, we'll use this to get the wire antennas in the tree and then we'll put up the, the poles in the middle. Now that we got the dipole up, we're going to use this uh, 
MFJ 1910. It's only about four or five pounds and it stretches out 33 feet. So we can get a 40 meter vertical wire on this uh, pole and this goes up real easy. Now that we have all of our antennas up, we can test them out. And uh, there's something really interesting that uh, I don't really understand how it works. But if I call, put a signal on the air and call CQ, there is this uh, network called the Reverse Beacon Network that I can, I can see how strong my signal is uh, by hams that have these skimmers set up that detect my signal and record, decode my call, and they can put it on the internet. So if I uh, put a signal on the air for a little bit of time, and uh, I don't need anyone to come back to me and give me a, a signal report, my signal is read by these skimmers, and, uh, and uh, I can see how strong I am at different parts of the country, or the world for that matter. So. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now. I'll put a signal on the air, call CQ with my four different antennas, and, uh, and we'll see what they hear. I think uh, now is a good time to talk about antenna noise. One of the things uh, I like to compare in antennas is uh, noise level. Th there you can hear the noise level on the vertical. It's about an S2 on this signal. Yeah. And the dipoles, uh, this, his signal report is about an S5. So if I switch to the vertical, uh, the noise level is higher and his voice sound noise is, and his signal is down. And with the end fed, the noise level disappears and he's still about an S5. So the end fed really gives a good signal with low noise. So that's a strong point for the end fed. So uh, the, this guy's from Sweden. I just worked him. His name is Ron, R U N E. And I worked him, and he told me the dipole was much stronger than uh, either of the other antennas, but the other antennas were also a good copy. So it's not a decibel number like I would get on the reverse beacon, but uh, it's good to talk to somebody to have somebody that has uh, ears to, uh, to give me a report. Okay, here is the reverse beacon network. I uh, hopefully can see this without too much banding. But uh, I can, I'll just search for my call and we'll see if anyone heard me. So there we are. These, all these people heard me. So uh, we will record on a piece of paper here exactly, um, exactly what kind of signal reports we have. There's a, a VE6. Um, JY, so that would be somebody from Western Canada, for British Columbia, or uh, Alberta, not quite sure, uh, probably Alberta. So, um, so at 14, see so here's, here's at 1410, 
I'm having the end fed. He heard me uh, 24 dBs loud. 24 dBs loud. Now on the, um, at 1415, the one five, he heard me at 28 dBs loud. And at 1420, so what kind of uh, conclusions can we make here from this? Actually, it seems like the, the data is inconclusive. In other words, um, at some point, the dipole was stronger, and other times, the, uh, the other antennas were stronger. Um, here, the, um, OL7M, uh, and he heard us with the Wyndham at 13 dBs at, on 1420, with the vertical at uh, 12 and uh, the dipole at 14. So it's all about the same. Station out west in the Rocky Mountains, WA7LNW, would have heard us on the vertical at 7, with the NFED at 9, and the dipole at 11. The mid-state, the, mid, uh, the middle of the country, of K9IMM, heard us with the Wyndham at 26, the vertical at 22, the NFED at 12, and the dipole at 17. So, uh, in this case, the Wyndham was the strongest. So, um, the data is kind of inconclusive. Um, this uh, French station heard us uh, with the um, dipole at 16, the Wyndham at 10, the N-Fed at 8, and the vertical at 6. So, that definitely has the, the dipole the strongest. Uh, N7... TR would be the Rocky Mountains, and that would uh, has the dipole equal to the vertical. OL7M, uh, the dipole is 24, Wyndham 28, and the vertical is at 10. I kind of feel like the dipole has been the strongest, uh, most consistently. However, sometimes there's a fluke and we get something completely different. Now on 40 meters, um, I, around 8 o'clock in the evening, these are the European stations that heard us. DL3KR uh, would be a German station. The dipole had us at 28, vertical 22, and fed at 23. So pretty close. So um, what conclusions can we draw from this uh, abundance of work? Only conclu conclusion that we can make is that uh, the results are inconclusive. Um, the dipole de definitely is a consistent performer. Uh, the NFED has a great receiver. Uh, it's uh, quieter, more pleasant to listen to. Uh, the vertical, um, maybe a, a little bit more inconsistent. Sometimes it performed well, and sometimes it didn't. And it was definitely noisier to listen to. But on the other hand, the vertical is such an easy antenna to set up and tear down. So uh, I guess the results are inconclusive. The most important thing is just to use the antenna that you've got. Thanks. Bye-bye.